Hi, I'm Bob Wormsley, and in this Constraints tutorial, we're going to look at making some quick viscous fluids. So real viscous simulation with high accuracy will take a long time, but we can combine constraints with the fluid PVD to get this really convincing, but very fast to set up, fluid viscous sim. Let's get started. So let's use our constraints viscosity setting to make some really nice gloopy viscous liquid like honey or glue or treacle that kind of thing so in this scene we've got a gravity here which is pulling down our particles and then we've got these two collider objects a plane and this cube, elongated cube that's going to be our wafer or chocolate bar or whatever so what we want to do is make this into fluid so let's first of all change the emitter shape from a rectangle uh, let's go to the object tab rectangle to circle and we want the emitter plane to be minus y so those particles are falling down so there we go let's just make this a bit smaller so obviously there's no physics going on yet apart from our gravity force and so they're all just falling down and landing on this um, cube so what we're going to do, we're going to use constraints and we're going to use the viscosity settings. Let's just bring that in first. So we'll bring in a constraints object. We'll go to the viscosity tab, which is a type of connection, and we'll put it on. And then let's see what happens. So straight away, we can see that something is happening. It's behaving differently, isn't it? Let's go to our emitter, just, just change the look of these. We'll go to the display tab, change it from dots to circles filled and um, let's change it from single color to we'll map a gradient to a parameter so the gradient's blue to white and we're going to map that to the speed of those particles and we're going to say we want them to be white by the time the particles are going i don't know let's say 600 centimeters a second um, so now we've got this different look okay so it doesn't look much like fluid, does it? But what we have got, if I display constraints, you can see that these particles are being held together by our viscosity constraints. And this is what's going to enable us to make us uh, be able to create a really fast simulating, but really nice, realistic, viscous fluid. So let's just take that display off. So. Let's just turn off the constraints for now. We're going to use the constraints in conjunction with another dynamic solver, and this is with the X particles fluid PBD. And these two play very nicely together. So now if I hit play, you can see we're getting a bit of a, a water simulation going on here, and it's kind of behaving a little bit like water. Okay, so that's fine. But if we uh, increase say the viscosity in the fluid PBD settings let's put up to 50 percent it's kind of working they're making them gloopy but they're not holding together very well these particles so this viscosity for this scene at these settings isn't going to work for us but if we reactivate my constraints viscosity straight away they're holding together a little bit better so let's just change these settings a little bit. Let's change the stiffness. Let's put these uh, viscosity constraints really stiff, like 98%. And let's see what we get. So now this it's really starting to hold together and keep its shape, which is interesting. So that's really good. But you can see what we're getting. We're getting, you see these gaps at the top which isn't great so one thing we're going to be able to do is if we go to my emitter and let's go to the emission instead of emitting the mode in rate I'm going to emit in a hexagonal grid which is the one that's been kind of devised for fluids because if I just switch off my constraints and my fluid PBD if I go forward one frame what it does it perfectly spawns these particles in a hexagonal grid so they're not intersecting they're not born in an intersected state and that's because fluid solvers can't allow particles to be intersecting so if they are it pushes them apart and if they're intersecting too much it means they're going to explode so let's just press play so that's looking pretty good and let's put on our constraints so our constraints are really binding them together, but we're getting these gaps. And that's because, if we go to our constraints, we have a limit of 16. So what it's doing is it's constraining all of these 16 together, 
and then the next frame more are born which are being constrained together and we're getting these big gaps so there's a couple of ways we can sort this out if I just increase my connection limit to say 40 that's sorted them out a little bit but we're still getting these gaps so let's go to our emitter into our emission tab and the spacing I'm going to reduce this way down. Now what this is doing is actually making those particles be born in an intersected state again. Let's have a look, just turn those off, go forward a frame. And can you see they've all been born on top of each other because the spacing's been reduced. If I put that back to 100% and respawn, they're all spaced out perfectly again. But because I have got my constraints active, which are going to hold these together, even though the fluid PBD solver is going to do its best to push these apart because they're intersected, the constraint is going to then hold them together. Let's have a look. Yes. So that's working. So what we can do now, the, the, the byproduct of this is that they tend to bulge out a little bit. So to get around that, we'll just make our emitter smaller. And now we should be getting this really nice, incredibly viscous fluid and it's really kind of holding its shape isn't it arguably even a bit too much let's go to the constraints and put that down to say 95 and there we're getting this amazing viscous fluid going on that's holding that shape and is looking really really nice so another thing we can do here remember with constraints all of these constraints is the springs become more stiff the more project sub steps and iterations um, are, are taking place so let's just hit command or control D to get to our cinema 4d project settings and we will up the subframe steps just by uh, two so subframe steps to three iterations to three this will seem a bit more slowly but we're going to get a much stiffer constraint all right so that's looking quite interesting so let's just try doing a different emitter shape I'm going to bring this down a bit so instead of having this circle let's try and mimic one of those shots where the chocolate's being poured on the wafer in a product shot so we'll go to the object tab and change the emission shape from circle to rectangle and let's make it really thin and let's see if we can mimic one of those nice thin kind of ribbons of chocolate uh, we might need to make some adjustments it might just work straight off the bat let's see so we'll press play and that's looking good I mean we're getting these curls and it's keeping its shape and obviously it's not quite right but these folds is what I wanted maintaining these folds as it's going down so that's working pretty well let's just bring it back we'll try just emitting let's just make it a little bit thinner I'm going to try emitting more particles and by emitting more particles in hexagonal mode you reduce the particle radius so let's put this down and say 2.5 so be more particles and we want that kind of ribboning effect so it's kind of getting there it's, again not quite right but we're getting these nice ribbon folds coming down that's looking pretty decent let's try upping the spacing a bit so they're not quite as compressed yeah and that's looking quite good I think arguably it's still a little bit too viscous let's go to our constraints and put this down to say 90 maybe fewer constraints maybe we could get away with only 20 as a limit all right and we're, we're, we're getting a bit of that uh, th that stripiness again because we haven't got enough connected but that's all right just for now it's looking pretty good so let's reduce that space and again fill it out and there we go and we could obviously push and pull until we get the exact kind of fluid shape that we want here but I'm pretty happy with that for a very fast to set up and fast to simulate a viscous fluid that is working pretty well um, let's just try a last one at much higher resolution more particles 
So with more particles, you can see that we're getting big gaps now. And that's because, because there's more particles, this connection limit is being used up really quickly. So we need much more, let's say 100 connection limits. And now we're getting that kind of gloopiness back with even more particles. And you can see that that detail, it's starting to look really, really, really detailed with these folds. We come in here, we're getting all of these folds and creases. We're getting a bit of stri uh, uh, stripey um, kind of subframe emission here. So again, we would need to maybe reduce the spacing a bit and increase the amount that are connected. Let's go to 150. And that's kind of filled those gaps out a little bit. But just look at the detail we're getting now in this section down here. We're getting these really amazing folds with this fluid. Really great creases happening here. And that's looking great. So obviously in your scene you push and pull that until you get something that is absolutely what you're after. But we're getting fast simulating and easy to kind of art direct viscous fluids and that is using the fluid PBD to drive the bulk of the fluid simulation but then using our old friend the constraints object with its viscosity connections to help hold that all together and give it that really nice viscous rigid feel.